Uh, those are 32 tiles that are used to, to design the maze. So these are all the, the graphics that we need to draw the maze patterns. Um, here's a, a dot that Pac-Man gobbles, here's a power-up pill, and then here is the, the font. Hello, you're watching AC's 8-Bit Zone. Today I'm going to show you the Coco DV that brings HDMI quality video output to the color computer and eventually to the Dragon the MC10 and uh, other uh, PAL versions of the Coco. Uh, but for now, uh, this is an upgrade for the Color Computer 1 and Color Computer 2. And uh, let's take a look at some of the features of Coco DV and I'll show you a few tricks to installing it into your computer. When you open your Coco DV package, you should have contents that are pretty much this. This is an optional programmer. You uh, may or may not have ordered this. And to go along with the programmer, there is a, a single wire mail to mail jumper. And we'll put that aside for now because this part of the video is more about installing the Coco DV itself. Okay, you'll have a paper template for making the drill and the cutouts for the connector board. Uh, you'll have a, a connector board that looks a lot like this with an HDMI connector and a RCA connector for audio output and two momentary push buttons. Then uh, inside the Coco DV box there's a little flex ribbon cable on the side. Then the Coco DV itself and uh, you may have a, a, a P version or a T1, depending on which, which you needed at the time you placed the order. And there should be some hardware. These are M3 mounting screws and nuts, two of each. There are a couple of wires. This is a uh, two, two pair of female to female DuPont connectors. Okay, uh, the colors don't matter, of course, but one of these will connect to the, the two male header pins that are right here beside the artifact push button. This is the artifact push button nearest to the, uh, flex, the flex cable connector. And uh, you'll connect one of these to the, you'll connect both of these sockets to the, to the two pin header. And then on the other end, you'll take this over to uh, either of the two buttons on the, the remote connector board. So you'll place it either you know, on H1 for that push button or on H2 for the lower push button. And you can choose either one that you want and the other one is a spare. Okay, with the other pair of DuPont cables, you'll clip one end and you'll solder this into the Coco main board. One of them can be a ground connection and the other one is to the sound out pin. It's, it's pin one on the, on the DAC IC. The other end will connect to the, uh, the header just here behind the RCA jack. So you'll just connect it onto there. And that brings the Coco sound out and you can connect this with an RCA cable to external speakers. At this time, there are two firmware loads for Coco DV. Uh, the board is the same hardware in, in both cases, but there's the VDG with the 6847P and then there's the 6847T1. These are two firmware loads and when you order Coco DV, just let me know which machine you have. This one's most common, and uh, it'll come to you preloaded with that with that firmware. If you'd like to have the flexibility later to change to the other one, then order the programming cable. It just occurred to me: uh, check your Coco DV when you receive it that uh, the socket has the the pin one marking toward the the top, or as I'm holding it here toward the right. Uh, go by the silk screen on the, the PCB itself. You can see the semicircles here are indicate the, the pin one end of the chip. 
Uh, it's possible that I may have placed the socket uh, rotated 180. So uh, just make sure that you go by the, uh, the marking on the silk screen. So pin one is in the upper left corner when you install your 6847 and Coco DV. If you have this Coco one with, I think it's the e-board, here's some of the things that you'll, you'll have to consider. So there is the RF shield that uh, surrounds all of the ICs or most of the ICs. Okay, you'll, you'll want to remove the circuit board and cut off this fifth plastic post. And uh, you can always keep that, keep the extra screw, and uh, it can always be glued back on later if you change your mind. So I do keep that. And there's a RF shield fence right here so you can use these male female uh, stacked pins to to raise it up enough to get clearance above the fence and i soldered these together uh, it takes just a quick amount of heat and uh, it's still easy to melt the, the plastic pieces okay for for picking up audio you can make the connections here at the RF modulator. In this case, the yellow wire is the sound output and uh, the orange wire is on a ground point. It's the end of R81. Another place to pick up ground could be uh, any one of these shield points like, uh, like this one here. On the connector board, on the back there is this H3 header and the left pin is the the sound and the right pin is ground. And on this version of the Coco 1 the board went under a redesign and things are rearranged a little bit but it's roughly similar. So here we do not need to to raise the Coco DV board up higher on pins. We can just remove the 6847 and plug Coco DV in there and uh, everything fits easily. The sound output is similar. So once again, the, uh, it's the second wire back from the front on the RF modulator. That's the sound output. Okay, again, the sound output is on the second wire back from the front of the RF modulator. It's labeled, it's labeled wire three, one, two, three, four. It's, the, it's three from the back. And, uh, and ground is picked up on the, the mounting ring right there. Both of these Coco ones came with sockets for the 6847. And on at least one of the Coco 2s, it was non-socketed, and I'll get to that one in just a moment. This was the first color computer 2, and it's unique in the fact that it had the melty keys, and its RF modulator stood vertically. So here I've desoldered the RF modulator. I've moved my relay, but that's not required. Uh, oh, there's a broken wire that I need to, to fix. I moved the relay so that I could install a, a ZIF socket in the 68, in the VDG slot. And, uh, but you do not need to move your relay. You just need to remove the, the RF modulator. And on the Coco 2 models, I think this is true for all of them, sound is coming out of a new chip called the 77526P and uh, it's pin one on that chip. That pin always leads to a resistor, and in this board, it's R8. So the right-hand side of R8 is sound output, and ground is on that, uh, the left side of that uh, capacitor C24. So uh, sound and ground.
If I'm not mistaken, this VDG was already socketed, as are many of the other ICs in this board. Here was an intermediate model of the Coco 2, full-size keyboard now. And I believe attempts were made to take cost out of this one because not many or maybe none of the ICs are socketed. Okay, looks like only the, uh, the SAM chip was socketed. Oh, and the RAM. So the SAM and the RAM's in this one. I needed to add a socket for the VDG. Let's dive into this one a little bit. So you can see here I've made the connection to the artifact push button. There's a header named H2 and uh, the, the pin ordering doesn't matter. You just bring either two, both of these connections back to, um, to one of the push buttons on the remote board. And you may choose either one, either of the two buttons that you'd like. And the other button is a spare. One possible use for the spare is to uh, make a copy of this other push button. This is the reconfigure push button. So uh, this is usually only needed for development. So let, let's say you're changing some of the configuration registers in the Coco DV to, to uh, enable some of the advanced modes. And uh, if you just want to clear those settings back to default, you can press this push button. So that would be one use for this, this alternate push button on the connector board. And you could do anything else that you'd want to with, with that one. And here, the, the sound from the 77526P, it's still pin one, but now it comes to uh, the right-hand side of R8. So that's sound, and I picked up ground on a, a little via that's available right here, uh, just above R8. That's the ground plane. You know, here's another one, same thing. Uh, I believe that this is two of them. Uh, this is TP2, it's called ground. So you could use either of these two or the one that I use there, or even like this point here. Let's dive into this one a little bit deeper to look at some of the things you might encounter on the main board. Sometimes there's some obstacles in the way. Let's just lift the board out. Okay, so for uh, most of the capacitors that are in the way of Coco DV, it's usually sufficient to just lean them over. So you can see I've leaned some to the left and bent some to the right, and it clears those easily now. But however, there's one particular capacitor that's in the way. It was, I think it was originally, where was it? Well, we can just look on the back. It's now here. It was just here between these two ICs at C21. It was just too tall and there was no room to bend it. So just go ahead and remove that one from the front and place it on the back. And to go along with that, you may cut a hole in the RF shield and uh, replace this on the back of the main board. Okay, moving on to this last Coco 2. This was, I believe, the last of the line of Coco 2s. It's unique in that it says Tandy now instead of Radio Shack, and it has the three diagonal bars instead of uh, the three rectangles. This one could come, I believe, with or without the T1, the 6847 T1 VDG. This is an example that actually has the T1. Let's dive in here and take a little bit of a closer look at it. Okay, this board is yet again a little bit different. We 
pick up the sound output in a similar way. It's still pin one of 77526P, but now pin one routes out to a resistor called R4. And you may pick up the, the, the sound output there at the top side of R4. And a convenient ground is located on a via just over here between uh, near two pins of at the bottom right corner of the chip. If you have the T1, you can identify it by this part number on the VDG, XC80652P. And just like on the, the intermediate Coco 2, this one also has a capacitor that was in the way C53. No, I'm sorry, that's C52. And again, I just removed it and uh, placed it on the bottom side of the board. There it is. That should cover most of the variations that you'll encounter in Coco 1 and Coco 2s. But if you find one significantly different, please leave me a comment or send an email. And uh, when you're installing the FFC ribbon cable, on, on both ends of this cable, th the blue tape goes up and the conductors go down. We'll take a closer look at this next on the bench. So regarding the orientation of the FFC ribbon cable, the blue tape side is always up and the conductors are down. So when you're looking at the board, the blue tape should be up. And that's true on both ends. So on the connector board, same thing. Blue tape is up when I'm looking at the connector on the board. Okay, there are two styles of these FFCs. This one is called reverse. So that means that the blue tape is on one, si on one end and the conductors are showing on the other end. The, uh, this is a type B. A type A ribbon doesn't work in this case, but a, a, a type A would have the blue tape facing up on both ends. So with this reverse style ribbon. We connect it like this. So let me give you a good close-up view of the way this should be inserted. So you want the, uh, the, blue, the blue tape up. With the blue tape up, go in just above the, the pins on the connector and just below the, the pins on the, the little black holding bar. So raise the holding bar up at a 90 degree angle and it, it has a light click so it, it's very easy to lift it. It just, you know, use light pressure, lift it up, okay, and go between the conductors or the pins and uh, that's it. Sometimes you might need to just slightly wiggle it a little bit. Um, you could have a situation where you're slightly crooked like this. So you want to make sure that it's really straight. And when it, when it inserts just a, a short distance, it's probably, uh, it probably goes in a sixteenth of an inch or maybe an even eighth of an inch, a couple millimeters. Um, once it goes in, that's all the way, and you just close the locking bar, and it's in. Actually, that's a little bit crooked. You can see it's just slightly crooked. So let me try that again. Lift up, readjust that, and uh, it's hard to see the way I'm holding it for the camera, but I think that's straight on. Yes, okay, so that's that's the way you want it to look there. Okay, and other end, same thing. Holding bar, locking bar up. With the blue tape up, go in the same way. See if it needs a little bit of a wiggle.
and when you are in and it's straight lock bar down and that's in and uh, you don't want to yank on it but it, it does hold quite firmly so it's not going to fall out easily Here's a closer view of uh, what you are to do with the buttons. So, um, again, on the connector board, there, there are two push buttons, and uh, you're free to choose either one that you want. I usually choose the top one for artifacts, and uh, the top pins go with that button. So you just slide the DuPont connector on, and uh, the other end would attached to the header here on Coco DV, just like that. Okay, and now we have a remote push button for changing artifact modes. And you can still use the push button on the board, uh, but uh, you can use either one you want. Okay, with the other push button, uh, it's a spare. You can do anything you'd want with it or just leave it unconnected. Uh, one thing that I do sometimes on mine is I wire it to the uh, configuration push button. There's not a dedicated header for the configuration push button, so I just solder it directly to uh, the, the two left pins on the push button. And uh, that's the, the config push button, which reconfigures the, the logic, the hardware logic. So uh, if you're changing registers, in Coco DV, and you're accessing some different tile modes or different graphics modes, and you want to just get back to uh, to a clean state, you can either power the Coco down and power back up, or you can press the config push button. And the only thing that that config push button clears is the Coco DV logic, and it brings it back to the default state. The only other connection that I'm that I haven't shown here is the uh, the audio. So here's a closer look at that. Uh, this is the RCA uh, audio jack out and uh, H3 on the back is the header for the audio and polarity matters here. When you're looking at H3 right side up like this the uh, center pin is on the left of H3. So uh, this is the sound output on the left, and this is the ground on right. So if, if you had soldered this wire into the Coco main board, uh, if you'd soldered the other end of this wire into the Coco main board, and uh, let's say gray was ground, then you would connect like this. Gray on the left, and sound on, I'm sorry, gray on the right, sound on the left. Just like that. So I hope that helps you get started making the connections with your Coco DV. If you have any further questions, please reach out. I'd love to help.